What if I were to tell you that there will be underwater exploration in Tears of the Kingdom, and we already have proof of this in multiple ways? And one of the ways in which we have proof doesn't actually involve spoilers, but rather involves just looking at the gameplay presentation. <laughs> yeah, folks, we're going to be deep diving here into the full world of exploration that's likely to exist here in Tears of the Kingdom. But before we do, I want to remind you that when we hit 100,000 subscribers, which we're getting really close, we just have to get there before Tears of the Kingdom comes out, we're going to give away a collector's edition of Tears of the Kingdom. We're also going to be giving away, I don't know, why don't we just throw in one of those Zelda OLEDs as well? Oh, man, we're not done. How about one of those pin sets? And you know what? We'll probably have a few other things we'll give away as well in celebration. Thank you guys so much for being here. Hopefully, you drop a like on this video because you're enjoying it. Let's get into the talks. So, look, we Tears of the Kingdom's out in you know a little over a month, and we still don't know a lot about this game. We've only, I mean, seen 10 minutes plus a few spliced together trailers. We really don't know a lot about the game, but a lot of people have been wanting underwater exploration to come back. And Look, I'm somebody that's on record saying I don't really like underwater levels. I don't really like underwater exploration. I don't think it's ever really been done well in Zelda outside of Majora's Mask. I, I will give the Zora Mask some credit here. But even then, it only felt good compared to like the water stuff in Ocarina of Time. I would still argue that adventuring through Termina on land still felt way better than even the mask. But... That's subjective, right? I'm just one person just because I'm not that into underwater exploration doesn't mean that it's not important and it doesn't mean it doesn't have a place in the Zelda series. And I can recognize that. And when we've been looking for evidence of underwater exploration for Tears of the Kingdom, it's been a little bit hard to come by because we haven't seen a lot of the game. We know there's sky islands. We know there's caves. We've seen them. We know there's constructs. We know about the four core abilities Link starts the game with now. But we don't know about underwater exploration, but I think we have a smidge of evidence. And I'm going to warn you, at one point, we are going to show a spoiler from the art book, which at this point, we can almost say everything in the art book is real. And on the other hand, we're going to just look at something that's visible in the gameplay. And I'll warn you before I show the art book spoiler in case you want to turn away. We're first going to get into the actual gameplay presentation. So that gameplay presentation was utterly amazing. You've seen it on repeat in a lot of my videos. You've seen it on repeat on many people's channels because it is the coup de grace for Nintendo. It's their next major game. Sorry, Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp. But Nintendo's next major game is Tears of the Kingdom. So you're going to see this gameplay repeated in videos almost all year. But... One aspect of the gameplay I want to show you quick is where Link is diving from the sky and he ends up in the river. And so people were hoping when he hit that river, we were going to see underwater exploration quick. It's a pretty shallow river, so I don't know that there's really much to explore. But one thing happens when Link goes underwater. One of his abilities lights up on his screen. His ability to ascend. Now, Ascend is an ability we know can be used in caves, can be used in certain situations to go through the ceiling of surfaces to get to the top. But what's interesting is it also seems to work when you're underwater. Why would you need the top of the water to be something that you could ascend to if you're never going to be deep enough in the water to need to use that ability? See, I find that to be quite interesting. When you're looking at this in retrospect of what that Ascend ability does, it's to go through the surface of items. Well, surface of water could be considered one of those surfaces, and it very much looks like it in the gameplay. Now, yes, in that given river, you probably can't go to the bottom and, and necessarily explore there because it's a pretty shallow river. But when we get into Lake Hylia or we get into some of the deeper pools of water or we get into the sea or the ocean, whatever they want to call it, yeah, maybe we can actually go under. Remember, there's rumors out there floating that we're going to be able to have boots, as an example, as a separate item from your pants. Last game in Breath of the Wild, they were combined. Why would we need separate boot items? What if that's because we're going to have things like the iron boots we could put on to go underwater? What if the Zora armor allows us to start zip, zipping through the underwater? What if we can build underwater submarines? There's a lot of possibilities here for that underwater exploration, but the clear sign that there might be some form of underwater exploration is the fact that we can ascend. Because why would we need to be able to use that ability underwater if we were never deep enough underwater for it to matter? 
Everything in Breath of the Wild is surface level. When you dive into the water, you barely go under and you pop right back up. You wouldn't need the Ascend ability to work underwater unless there was a reason for it to, such as actually being at the depths of the water and needing to return quickly to the surface. Now, this is where we're going to dive a little bit into spoilers. So I just want to give you that spoiler warning right now. I'm going to show you something from the art book and again, I don't consider this to be a major spoiler, but it is in the art book and does support underwater exploration. There is a piece of art that I'm going to show you right here. And as you see, this art appears to depict this, uh, uh, underwater, right? You appear to be underwater in some sort of structure. You can see the sun way off at the distance in the top uh, that appears to be shining through water. We can see what appears to be uh, the, those circle patterns we've seen that, that we thought were tears or, or drops or something like that. But even if those circle patterns don't mean much to you because they appear all over everything uh, Tears of the Kingdom related, look at the air bubbles that appear in the top right. Those are very clearly air bubbles coming from something, likely underwater creatures, maybe even yourself as a character, and you're looking up at the sun. Very clear from here that the Ascend ability would be nice to get back up from here. It's also very clear looking at the surrounding area above the supposed ceiling here, it looks like it's some underwater tunnel or cave. And guys, this is underwater exploration. This is underwater gameplay in the art book. Now, why should we believe the art book? Because as I showed in a prior video, so many other things in the art book were proven 100% true in the actual gameplay footage. And since almost everything in the art book has been proven true in the actual gameplay footage, that leads you to believe the entire art book is literally just of locations and things that are in the game rather than just being ideas. Now, we might get some idea art books down the line that, you know, Sure, the aliens and some other crazy stuff like they did for Breath of the Wild that didn't make the cut. But the art book in the collector's edition appears to be art based on what's actually in the game. So we now have direct evidence that there will be underwater exploration of some type. And that's going to make a lot of people excited. Again, we could talk about the possibilities of building our own submarines, talk about the ability of iron boots, talk about the ability of Zora armor, or whatever other contraptions. Maybe... Link's Ascend ability can be used to go down as well, and we don't just don't even know yet because we've never had the ability to use it. So I'm really excited by the prospect of what this could mean. Even though I personally am not that into underwater exploration, I'm not going to sit here and just say, hey, I don't want it at all. It does add more layers of exploration to this world, and obviously in Breath of the Wild, we, we couldn't even do this at all. So having the ability to do it, period is definitely exciting. So you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Am I on to something here or am I just crazy? I'll catch you guys in that next video.